In this video, I'm going to show you how to make this incredible milk chocolate sourdough bread, which we'll then use to make epic chocolate French toast. To start, add 100 grams of active sourdough starter and 425 grams of water that's been warmed to about 85 degrees Fahrenheit to a large mixing bowl. Mix these together until the starter is broken up and more evenly distributed throughout the water. Next, add 125 grams of sugar, 9 grams of salt, 1 teaspoon or about 4 to 5 grams of vanilla bean paste or extract, and 50 grams of cocoa powder. I use this Hershey's brand, just make sure whatever cocoa powder you're using, cocoa is the only ingredient. Then mix these together to combine. Finally, add 500 grams of bread flour and mix together until all of the flour is fully hydrated. Don't forget to scrape down the sides of your bowl after you're done mixing. Cover your dough with a damp towel and let it rest on the counter for one hour. To build strength in the dough, perform four rounds of stretch and folds, each spaced 30 minutes apart. During the second and third round of stretch and folds, you're going to add a total of 150 grams of semi-sweet chocolate chips. Add about half during the second round of stretch and folds, then wait 30 minutes, then add the remaining chocolate chips during the third round of stretch and folds. You can use whatever kind of chocolate chips you prefer. I used mini semi-sweet chocolate chips here, but regular size work great, or you could even cut up any kind of chocolate bar that you like. When working with a dough with inclusions, I find it much easier to do coil folds for the last round of stretch and folds. To coil fold, pick the dough up and tuck the ends of the dough under themselves. Spin the dough and repeat this as many times as you can until the dough doesn't seem like it wants to stretch anymore. You don't want to push it and cause tears on the top of the dough. Cover and rest your dough on the counter for about two more hours. After allowing your dough to rest and bulk ferment, Pick your bowl up and flip it over. Allow your dough to naturally release from the bowl onto the counter. Using your hands or a bench scraper, gently stretch the dough out into the shape of a rectangle. Fold each of the long ends of the dough in towards the center, then roll the dough up into a ball from the short side. Very gently shape the dough into a ball. Be careful not to over tighten the dough or the chocolate chips will tear it. Then, cover your dough and let it rest on the counter for 30 minutes. To final shape your dough, pick it up with a bench scraper and flip it over so the smooth side is down on the counter. Fold the top of the dough down towards the center, then fold each of the sides into the center. Finally, fold the bottom of the dough up as high as it will reach, then flip the dough over and gently tighten the surface of the dough and seal the bottom by pushing and pulling the dough on the counter with your hands. Be careful not to tear the surface of the dough by over tightening it. Then dust your dough with cocoa powder and place it smooth side down into a banneton. Rest your dough in the banneton for five minutes and then gently pinch the sides of the dough and pull them in towards the center. This helps create more surface tension on the dough and will make scoring the dough easier and help it keep its shape when we flip it out of its banneton to bake. Sprinkle the bottom of the dough with more cocoa powder and then cover with a reusable bowl cover or place the dough into a plastic bag and refrigerate the dough overnight. The next morning, preheat your oven with a Dutch oven inside to 450 degrees for about one hour. Take your dough out of the refrigerator and gently flip it out of its banneton onto a piece of parchment paper. Use a pastry brush to gently dust off any excess cocoa powder. Then do any decorative scoring that you'd like to on your dough, as well as a few deep expansion cuts. Then place your dough on its parchment paper into your preheated Dutch oven. Just before shutting the lid, I like to throw a couple of ice cubes into the Dutch oven. This helps create some beautiful blisters on the crust and helps make a nice, shiny, and crispy crust. Place your Dutch oven into your oven preheated to 450 degrees and bake with the lid on for 30 minutes. After 30 minutes, remove the lid from your Dutch oven and turn your oven down to 400 degrees. Continue to bake for an additional 10 to 15 minutes. Remove your bread from the oven and allow it to cool on a wire rack. One way to tell if the loaf is cooked all the way through is to flip it on its side and knock on the bottom. 
If the bread sounds hollow, it's cooked all the way through. Allow your bread to cool fully before slicing into it. Look at all that chocolatey goodness inside. Let's make some chocolate French toast. To a wide shallow dish or bowl, add four eggs, one cup of half and half, and one teaspoon of vanilla extract. Mix these together with a whisk or fork. Then add a half a teaspoon of nutmeg, one teaspoon of cinnamon, one teaspoon of sugar, and a pinch of salt. Mix these to combine. Preheat a pan over medium heat with butter or cooking spray. Place your bread one or two slices at a time into your egg mixture and coat on both sides. Then transfer it directly to your hot pan and cook on both sides until golden brown. Top your French toast stack with fresh berries, whipped cream, and maple syrup. And enjoy! Please leave a thumbs up and subscribe if you enjoyed this video. Next up in my chocolate sourdough series is a white chocolate raspberry and pistachio loaf.